Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Laugh. It's got another video for you guys today. Who would have guessed? Well, who would have also guessed that we have here, A1707. This is a 15-inch MacBook, and it's a very nice one still, even to this day, because it has four USB-C ports. Who would have guessed that either? Because that's pretty cool. But sometimes you don't see them all the time, right? You usually stuck with two, especially on some of the newer ones, you still get stuck with two. And even some of the other pro models, you're still stuck with two anyway. But this one, again, it's in here because it's not turning on. And we always want to see really what's going on with it. So we got, what do we got here? Oh, yeah, we got our USB-C tester here. And we can go ahead to, we want to check to see how the computer is responding to, right, uh, voltage coming in. So we can do that. And we always want to check all four ports because uh, it does matter if one port takes one, if one port takes, shows one thing, and then maybe another port shows another thing. So let's go on. So I'll plug in and see what we get there. We got, we got five volts, about 2.25 amps. Oh, and that's called uh, cycling there. It's a power cycle. And oh, it's gonna keep doing it over and over again. Okay, that's not good. Let's move about this one. Same thing. So five volts, 0.25. Yep, so we're getting the same thing over there. How about all the way over here? Let's go ahead so you guys can see. So I want to check the other side too, make sure we're getting the same thing. If we are, then what do you guys think that means, right? So this one's nothing at all, huh? Ooh, interesting. Nothing. Usually nothing. Let's see both sides. Okay. Usually nothing. That means what? Probably the port itself is bad, right? Um, but it's kind of strange for the both ports to be acting up right on the other side and the the one side. So usually, of, again, usually a zero. Uh, anything comes up there it's not taking anything uh makes sense right that maybe the port's uh, broken damaged um usually a lot of the traces can actually be cut or something because maybe someone keeps trying to plug in uh the device and it's just not charging so they get a little bit more aggressive with it and maybe they can slash off some of the trace lines there and now knowing ab about something like this when you have usb-c what do you have you have a power line and you also have a data line there so if you're wiggling the the adapter there, um, some, and you're going to touch other traces or damage other traces, sometimes those traces can touch, and maybe that one power line hits the data line, and then you have a big problem, right? Um, so that could be something that's part of the case, or maybe it already had a problem, you know, like a liquid spill or something, and then uh, you're going to make that worse, and then possibly cause another short on top of that. So you could fix the liquid spill, then there could be something else, and then even from there, it could damage the T2, T2 can get corrupted, and then you are just always down a nice big old rabbit hole just because these USB-C uh, ports, connections, and lots of things going on there. And besides the point of all that, um, we've seen them fail quite a bit anyway because there's a chip right in there that regulates all that stuff, and it's doing too much at once. Um, the older MagSafes, they usually use what? They just use a dedicated power line. There's no other data, just dedicated power. So it's very easy to see what the problem is and work with a little bit more because you have a dedicated power line. You don't have data and power lines all at the same ports and then you have a big mess and then you have two ports of each side like that and then you have uh, if you have two ports on each side that means you have four cd32 chips to work with on each side and all of them have to work and it's always just a big mess really when something like this happens so more ports actually does mean more problems in this case so uh who knows what's going on with that because we still need to open it up we need to take a look at it so let's actually do that right now all right so let's see what we got here lift this up man it's really dusty ugh Oh, look at that. I don't go that dust. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. <laughs> right? It's, it seems like it's old, eh, right? It looks ancient, old, even though it's not that. What is this, a 2017? Man, after all these years, about six years? Looks like this. You know, I think, though, this would help if there's like a liquid seal. You probably see it because it'll clean up some of the dust, right? Just touching it, if that's the case. It's really dusty and dirty, can, can lead to bad problems, too. I'm curious about this because this will probably lead to more things. So let's go ahead and take a look at the port over here. Let's see. Damaged port or something. Something has to be pretty bad here. Yeah, I can tell. Bless you. See that the port is actually damaged over here. Shredded. You can kind of see. Uh, let's see if I can show you guys here. It's a little very hard to tell here, but if I try to maybe rotate it a little bit, you might be able to see it there if you got a good eye. Well, that's why we go in the microscope, but we'll take a look at that. Well, we'll take a look at the microscope and see. It looks to be shredded. Oh, there we go. Now you can see it. <laughs> Flip it over, right? 
Yep, there's a nice little burn there. Okay, so we take a look at it. Look at that. Woof. Man, what happened there? So not only did uh, some of the trace lines cross there, they also burned, right? Which would make sense because sometimes uh, you're going to have this much damage. Maybe it's a liquid spill. Who knows? Maybe it's a bad charger. Maybe there's a chunk of green in that charger as well. Totally did that. But what's more interesting is not only that this has damage here. Uh, let's see the back too. There's also damage on the other one. This one's been, looks like that. This started to melt a little bit there too. So maybe what might be going on here is maybe they got they got liquid on. Oh man, look at that. Man, even that. So this what might be happening here is maybe there was a liquid. Maybe there was liquid damage or in the charger itself there, right? And the charger actually did this to it. Who knows? It's really interesting. Or maybe it got a little bit soaked on there on the edges. You got a little bit of drip of water and touched it up and then did on both sides, right? Plugged in, tried one side and then try the other. And it didn't work so it's really interesting and it completely burned there so since it's really burned there um let's take just take a look at the board since we have it out there make sure nothing else really got impacted if there's any impact because that can make a damage to it itself look how dusty this is man Oof. man we're trying to look though we don't want to uh have a problem maybe there's corrosion underneath it and then if you clean that you don't want to do that but we can just do like a wipe down something okay so clean up a few things there. So Thomas got cleaned up a little bit there, and we just just a little bit of cleaning here. I don't want to go too crazy with it because never wanted to do that. Uh, just make sure at least the dust is clean there. Looks be pretty good. So now we're really interested, um, and this side especially that this was the bad side, right? Was it the bad side? I think it was. We we'll flip this back over to the way it was, and remember we were getting no voltage over here. Let's go ahead and plug in our um, SVC port. Looks like we're getting about the same thing, huh? Doesn't look to be good. It's never an easy fix, is it? Nope. Makes sense too because there was a um, a problem with it before, right? Especially if it's burned or something. So we probably need to take a look at it. Let's actually go into thermal cam. I think that might be a little bit more fun, and we'll see um, what's been impacted there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we see that this one we have it plugged in here, and we do see one of our uh, ICs is actually bad. You see that? It just kind of goes, it pulsates, and then kind of dies. Actually, it's really funny because we're working on another video of uh, this guy actually has two laptops, <laughs> and I got the same problem on both of them. It's doing the same thing. So I wonder if he had a bad charger and kept killing his laptops with the charger because that's what it kind of looks like here. Maybe they got liquid got in there, and he tried it on both, and he probably damaged both of them because the same IC is going bad on both of them. So we need to replace it, and we're going to be using some flex here. And we're going to take out that old CD3215. And we need to do that pretty carefully because it's really easy to damage. And you can see this is actually BGA, which means it's a ball grid array. And yes, there's a ball to, underneath it. And that's actually attached to the main chip itself. So when you do a replacement on these, you need to make sure that the old balls are actually removed. And it's going to have a nice uh, connection for the new chip that has the balls underneath there as well. So when you make sure it's good, we're going to use a hot iron here, clean up the old one. And we're going to do a full replacement on it. And then we can go ahead and test it out. And hopefully it'll work now. Plug it in. Fans are spinning. We replaced all the, the jacks too. Just mods on both sides because it's better. See, we're getting our voltage there. You see that? Okay, fans are spinning. And screen's really messy too. Yeah, we'll make sure we clean up that screen. Oh, okay. So these ones do require battery. Um, let's let it charge up for a little bit. Probably won't take too long. And then, um, yeah. We'll let it charge up for a little bit, then it should turn on. So it's almost like three amps. Okay, comes up. You can really expose the dirty screen. We'll clean up that screen and make sure it's all good. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on fixing the A1707 15 inch MacBook Pro. Still a pretty nice model, even though it's still on the older Intel chip. Still, people like that nice 15 inch screen. It's better fixing it than going ahead and spend on a new one because if you actually look at the prices on the new 15 inches and 16 inches oh man it's definitely a headache so i don't even want to think about that but it's a nice screen nice laptop and did the repair so hope you guys enjoyed watching if you did please leave like for this help us a lot we got lots of logic board repairs on the channel if you want to go ahead and check that out too data recoveries and lots of other cool things definitely go ahead 
and see what's going on there. So anyways, till next time, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.